Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters Community, is brought to you by Handy Quilter, designed by a quilter for quilters, and Husqvarna Viking, keeping the world sewing for over 140 years. Hi, and welcome to Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters Community. I'm Mary Kate Carpetris, and I'm here today for an interview with Thomas Knauer. Hello, Thomas. Hello. Thomas is a textile designer and a quilt designer, um, but and you're also an author, and we have a copy of your book here, Modern Quilt Perspectives. And I love the subtitle of it, which is 12 Patterns for Meaningful Quilts. And that really constitutes what we're here to talk about today is the meaning behind your quilts. Right. Because each one, we like to say every quilt tells a story. With you, every quilt really tells a story. So um, we're going to talk about these quilts here on the table in front right. of us. And that's, you know, at the basic level, I think of pretty much all of my quilts in terms of translation. How are the forms, the colors, the relationships, how are they translating a story into form? Okay. So it's not just here's the story and then forms happen and there's an illusion or a vague reference. There's a literal translation going on. So you can appreciate it just as a really cute, because this is a kid's quilt right. that we have in front of us. So it would be very possible for somebody to make this or look at it and just appreciate it for, oh, that's cute, and it's really cute fabrics, and it should go together pretty quickly. But for you, it's much deeper than right. that. Right, and that's where, again, it may, the design may be a literal translation, but the quilt isn't just literal. Well, tell it us the story that. behind this quilt. So this one was made for my daughter, Matilda, who I call B. Um, she was about three years old. We were walking from our house to our local coffee shop. Coffee shop is a central part of our life. Mm -hmm. It used to be the village toy store, and it still has a little play area for kids and stories. That's and she's fun. been there with me almost every day of her life when we've been in town. And we're walking along, and we're holding hands, and she stops and just points at the ground and says, Papa, we are in H. And it takes me a moment to, like, okay, that's an odd thing, but right. three-year-olds say the craziest sure. things. Um, and then I see our shadow, and she's right. We, we were making an H, and my head is just there. That's, that's the next quilt. I have to make that right now. Mm -hmm. Of course, we went to the coffee shop, read stories, had mm -hmm. a snack, mm -hmm. then came home. and I, So then, then really the form was just presented to me by the, by the experience and that sort of capturing a small moment. But, and it was partially the language she used. We are an H, mm -hmm. not we make an H. Just symbolically leapt out to me. So all it took me in terms of design was really just find a way to intertessellate the H's without leftover filler blocks or anything and pick the fabric, which I you know, chose one of my own collections, um, but it was designed for Matilda mm -hmm. as sort of a little love story in color to her that you can be anything, giving her pink rhinoceri because rhinoceri. boys or rhinoceroses, this is, Boys get big and predatory animals in trucks. Girls get princesses yes. and things like that. Boys get blue, green, you know, and girls get pink, purple, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I, this whole collection was about not allowing those divisions to ever really completely happen. Mm -hmm. It's a collection just to use it all together. So it was then sort of doubling for her. When I showed her the quilt, she just said, Papa, that quilt is us. So she and just slid got it. right through all those symbolic layers. And that was a really important part, it, sort of experience for me as a quilter to sort of see, yes, these really are those deep symbolic objects. They're extraordinary. And now and she, she gets to keep this quilt. And she calls it her forever. very most favorite thing. Oh. Um, and I love that. It's really and, and that's really that her reactions to the quilts just are part of why I'm addicted to them. Mm -hmm. that, that just open and honest of, is that for me? But not a greedy, just this mm -hmm. wonder of mm -hmm. this thing. This quilt is, is for, for you. Well, and let's say, let's take a look at another quilt you made for, or because of, or? So this is for my son. For your Simon. son. And well, after Matilda was born, I, I became ill and was diagnosed with a rare 
genetic neuromuscular disorder. And so when we wanted to have a second child, um, I didn't want to take the risk, knowingly take the risk of passing on that gene that we didn't know when right. we conceived Matilda. So we um, used donor um, and went through IUI and we went nine tries, which is very specific of nine becomes specifically or especially stressful because most insurance companies cut you off at nine tries. Oh gosh. And then you have to decide whether you yeah. keep going and et cetera, et cetera. But you become very obsessed with just those two cells coming together. Yeah. You, you, the baby, the child, everything else starts to receive, you, you, it's gone. All you care about are two cells that should come together. That when we had Matilda, I think I, I looked at Catherine from across a room and she was pregnant. <laughs> and now with all of medical science, yeah. we can't get pregnant. Right. She can't, but we, but you yes. know what I mean. So, it's enormously stressful, and, and it's very modern. It's right. a very modern concern. And that's where I wanted to then, can I take that? As baby quilts are, there's a whole new vocabulary of relation to having and raising and whatnot a baby. Can I make a baby quilt that speaks to some of those new realities? So, um, and it becomes very sterile, which is why the sort of very gridded and gray background was about sort of the sterility we felt in the process. So this is the top of the quilt this over here the to top, my left, And right? it starts with two squares, two colors, those two cells. And those two colors go to the next set of four. And those four colors go to the set of eight, 16, 32, 64. And this last group that starts about halfway through mm -hmm. is 128 different Kona solids. So what you get at the end, the quilt as a whole, is the whole riot of color. All of this color, which is Simon, Mm -hmm. but born of this, of cellular mitosis. Yeah, this really elemental with that. concern. And, and really for me, it's, so it's a describing of the process, but to me it's also, we're not gonna hide this fact from him as he gets older, is that this is a promise to him of, here's the process, but you were always this quilt. And this quilt is my relation to you of, you are my child, and there was never a doubt. There's no even question of it. The biology is the biology, but you are my child yeah. and always will be. And I hope this quilt means something to him later when he is older um, as a way of me, of, again, really that word of a promise yeah. to him. And I think this is a pattern that, now that you've described it, can really speak to a lot of parents. I mean, I right. have friends who've gone through you know, reproductive technologies, and, and it just, it is very stressful, and I think having this can be very meaningful to a lot and of And a way of tell, keeping that story and making, making it be something more, and mm -hmm. not something we're hiding from. And, yeah. and that's, yes, the, that's the process of great quilt blocks of the 19th century. The ones that survived were the symbolic blocks that other people could relate to yeah. and bring into their lives, and I hope some of these can do that and mm -hmm. do do that. And here's one more quilt inspired by or made for or all of the above for one of your children, right? Yes. Uh, we make, I make so many quilts for the kids and so many of them are just to be on the floor. Um, we, we use play mats like crazy. I just throw them out, go play or throw a quilt in the, in the push chair and go for a walk. Then we have something to throw down. Um, if they get dirty, they get washed. And I was thinking about alphabet quilts as my children are learning to read and speak and whatnot, but I didn't want to literally just applique all the letters. Um, so I started thinking about what are other ways of representing letters that might be more native to the quilt technique vocabulary, mm -hmm. and I landed on Braille. And so this quilt, the overall design, is a Braille alphabet. Wow. All 26 letters, there are a couple blanks because 26 doesn't subdivide into or rectilinear form okay. besides two by 13. So, but this first group up there is So this is two, the top of the quilt, so okay. So a braille unit is just two dots across, three dots down, and sometimes the dot is made and sometimes it's not. Right. So there's the letter A, B, C, just these six square units that become an overall very abstract, I think probably very modern feeling. Yeah, it um, has a really um, random, 
placed since mm -hmm. now have you but it's not at all arbitrary no. because it's just the letters and so how system can produce feel mm -hmm. is something I've always been interested in artists like Saul LeWitt who have unbelievably systematic art but it feels so organic and lush at a certain level mm -hmm. I like that idea that's something that's always drawn me to quilting of how system and planning and whatnot can still lead to these very organic feeling um, and happenstance and using scrap to then just go mm -hmm. um, and how system and feel play against play with each other and so i wanted to make them an alphabet quilt and so here is their alphabet quilt it's called abecedarian which is actually a very old word it's from a b c d but it means a beginner, a novice. Okay. Um, it's not a made up or new word, it's a very old word that we've kind of lost. And this but, is made with your um, fabric design too? Um, yeah, this is, was done out of a collection called Thesaurus, mm -hmm. which was... Again, very word oriented. And, and it was done for, uh, in conjunction with Quilts for Kids, and thinking about what it means to, and having had the experience of being chronically ill. Quilts for Kids gets fabric to people to then make quilts to donate to hospitals right. or to children with terminal or chronic illness, having had the experience of being bedridden for a very long time, your world becomes very small. Um, it, and so long words to me, they inspire stories. Crazy cool long words, they just ask to have stories made up. So making a collection that sort of revolved around the joy of words. Um, I know having my wife just come and read to me because I couldn't, because wow. my eyes couldn't focus, um, was extraordinary. Um, and so that was that, could I make a collection that might just inspire or prompt in some small way that, that sharing of stories mm -hmm. to enlarge the world just a little bit for someone who can't go out into the world. I knew some of the background behind that collection and I have a little bit of this in my own stash at home and I haven't haven't dared to cut into it yet because I want to use it in the right way I just I really love it but hearing your explanation of what really the meaning that goes into it is um, oh I love the stories behind <laughs> these things um, we are going to um, come back for a second episode interview episode and we're going to dive into some of your more political quilts. So if, if the children's quilts have meaning, but then you have a whole other type of quilt that you make that has really, I mean, you, you're, you can enjoy these quilts on an abstract level, but the other quilts, the political quilts, those are, the stories are really intrinsic yeah. to your uh, understanding uh, of the quilt themselves. And that's where for me it even gets to the idea of, of how the word modern is used. To me, modern is about reflecting a time and our engagement, yeah. how our experience of the world at this time. And my engagement of this world is holding my daughter's hand and political advocacy. It's, it's the small gesture and the large issue. It's not one or the other, it's those, the small, the large, and everything in between mm -hmm. is how we speak about our world. And that to me is what makes something modern not a style, not an aesthetic, that is, that's all secondary. Those are the tools we right. use, not the essence of modernity. Um, so we'll see in some of these others, I'll go from right. profoundly well, scrappy, instance, traditional looking all the way to, the one to that's a barcode. Behind you. We're going to talk about this in the yes. next episode. So we hope that you will come back and join us. We look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks. Bye-bye. Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters Community, is brought to you by Handy Quilter, designed by a quilter for quilters, and Husqvarna Viking, keeping the world sewing for over 140 years.